This is A Game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what am I talking about? This is how black women became the new men. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it here on the Crimson Cure channel. Um, black women, you're the new men, and you need to go ahead and accept that, that you are the new men of the black community. <laughs> Don't know if you were trying to do that or not, but you certainly succeeded. And the reason why I'm saying that black women are the new men is because you lead these super masculine lives, and then you want feminine results after that, and then it doesn't work that way, right? Because everything that you do under the lost value system betrays your biology. Every single thing that you do betrays who you are on a biological level. Buying into these ideals, buying into this lost value system where only the external things matter, where only wealth matters, where only education matters and these sorts of things, your profession, your leisure, your mobility, all of these things, since these are the only thing that matter underneath the lost value system. And they've got you, one of the few groups of women that, that you're in the charge and the lead for this, because remember a long time ago, they were comparing uh, black women to white men in terms of mobility in this country, which should have been a slap in the face because I dare you uh, uh, compare me to what men are doing. But anyway, this is how black women are seen. And this is really what you do. So everything that you do actually betrays your biology and you ignore the biological demands of both yourself and men. You ignore the biological demands of black men to the point where you don't even really think about the biological demands of black, women, black men and you really don't think about your own. And then you end up, this is really why black women end up bitter and they end up mad at black men later on in life because these relationships aren't working out and these marriages, if you happen to get into one, not working out, you know, all of these family dynamics are not working out again because you as a woman have done your life and fashioned your life in this masculine way. And then you turn around and you want feminine results from that, right? So you're frustrated on the outcomes of the masculine path that you're really told to take underneath the lost value system. So one of the main areas that you're frustrated about is actually mobility because you don't really understand mobility. Mobility functions as the gateway between your internal values and your external values. And most women kind of lose it with mobility. It's not that we don't understand any component of it, but we don't understand it in the totality that we really need to or that men understand mobility, right? So we don't really understand it and we're frustrated by not understanding truly mobility. We think money is mobility. That's, that's the truth of it. Women actually think the more money that they have, the more mobility that they have is not necessarily true and it doesn't really do anything for your understanding of mobility either right? Because we get confused that you think if you get a certain amount of education or you have a certain profession or you have certain wealth, that your mobility and that your understanding of that actually increases. And that's not necessarily true. So the, the one thing that women miss out with the mobility is how to make decisions based on a wide range of factors that appear to be unrelated, but are heavily related. Instead of making decisions based on whether or not something's going to affect me, has already affected me, or will affect me in the future. 
See, women are selfish and we like to make decisions based on whether or not something is going to be good for us or not good for us. Men don't really do that. Do they look out for themselves? Yes. But they also are making decisions based on a wide, like I said, a wide range of factors that appear to be unrelated. They're thinking of things very differently than the way women are thinking of things, which is why men move differently in the world than women do. And y'all, again, y'all ignore the biology of this because you think you can lead, go through the world like a man and do everything that a man is doing. But then you don't like the man outcome for this. You get frustrated by your profession. A lot of times you choose masculine work. You choose to be police officers. You choose to be firefighters. You choose to go into the military. You choose to go the politician route. You want to be corporate execs. All of this stuff is super uber masculine because you're either doing something physically taxing or you're doing something that uh, that that call for you to be tactile or cutthroat or extra competitive. So like when you enter into the corporate world at a higher level, that you got to work through the lost value system. You can't be having, you really got to do like the 48 laws of power, which is a handbook for the lost value system because it removes all the internal values, right? It removes moral compasses and spirituality and all that sort of thing. So you actually get into professions that help you remove what little remnant of that you might actually have. So you don't have no integrity. You don't think twice about whose throat to cut to get to the next level because the way you're thinking, I got to cut your throat. I can't be nice or else I'm going to be held back, right? When you go into the, you know, you go on to work being who, who goes to actually choose to be like a correctional officer? Who wants to do that? That's such a masculine job. And then the, the part about it is, is you can't code switch out. So you take that energy on whether you on the clock or off the clock. This is why can't nobody get along with you after work. Because you masculine at work, right? If you a CO or a police officer or whatever, you don't have a whole lot of trust in the goodness of people. Anything could be a setup. Anybody could be going behind your back. Anything could be a problem. So you got your head on a swivel for every little thing, every little detail. And that doesn't make for a good feminine partner in a relationship because you bringing all that masculine energy from work. If you're a politician or you whatever, you being cutthroat. You don't got time to have your emotions all out and being vulnerable and all that sort of thing. This is why a lot of y'all can't be vulnerable at home because you pick professions that call for you to be in this masculine energy and then you can't pull out and be like, well, with my man, I'm going to be vulnerable. At home, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to have a softness. I'm going to have this just this really soft energy. I don't need to compete. I'm not at work. These are not my coworkers. These, this is my family that I have, and I have my man here, and so I don't have to think about all of these masculine things that I generally would have to when I go to work. I don't know why y'all choose to be men at work anyway. Y'all so busy trying to prove that a woman can get into this field and that field. It's like, come on. Y'all going into these little masculine fields because you're trying to be a man. And then you mad at the fact that you have to be a man after all of that. Anyway, then you're mad at the wealth. You usually can't get by. Women usually can't get by without at some point having some type of handout. Either you got some type of grant money that was given to you through policy because you was a single mother or because you fit some category to get it or whatever. Many, there are lots of men who are self-made, who are successful, who can say, I never had that handout. I never had those doors open to me to make things easier for me to get my wealth. I really did have to pull that stuff out of the mud. Nobody had mercy on me because I was a man and I was expected to do it. I was expected to have the system order and structure in place 
that was going to allow me to be successful. And I either succeeded or failed on my own. Nobody came and was giving me food stamps and section. Nobody. So those, those are overwhelmingly things that women actually receive in this society. Not so much men. Because men are expected to do what? Pull it up out the mud. You get it on your own. Ain't nobody having no mercy on you because you're supposed to be a man. Right? So women a lot of times get handouts. They get help from men. Right? You expect a man to help you in some type of way, give you some money, pay a bill, whatever the case may be. And all of that type of stuff. If you got kids and they need to be watched, sometimes you at a point in your life when you can't afford the babysitting, the uh, child care. So you got you, you know, get your cousin to do it either for free or for some type of discount or something like that. Men don't usually have that option. Ain't nobody babysitting your kids. You a whole man, figure it out. Whether it's fair or unfair, it don't matter. They tell a man, you figure it out. You got to figure it out on your own. And then the other thing that frustrates you about your wealth is that once you come to the end of this line, you don't want to do with wealth what men are expected to do with their wealth. So the point is, why did you do all of that if you was only going to turn around and try to be a woman after all of this masculine endeavor that you did? And not to mention, you pick up all of the, you know, the worser traits of masculinity. I hate to say bad or worse traits of masculinity because it's fine for men to do. It's just not fine for you to do. You know, you want to be super promiscuous and smoke drugs and sit back and smoke cigars. It's a big thing with women smoking cigars. That looks so garish and mannish. You know, you sitting back with just a big stogie in your mouth. You know, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Ooh, what's wrong with you? Yeah, knock all of that off. You running around here trying to be a whole man. And then you want to be feminine. When you get tired of doing all that, you done get through your education, you done got through made you some money, you know, and all that, you do a hustle, you a hustler chick and you a boss chick and all of that type of stuff. Then you want to come through and get a man and then be a woman. So you did masculine stuff, but then you want a feminine result. Nobody told you to lead a masculine life. Then you want to be taken care of. You get old and then you want a traditional family. You want a man, no matter what you've done, you want a man to come in and take care of you and take care, you know what I'm saying? Just lift all your burdens. You want him to lead. You want him to have system of structure. You want him to take care of any kids you didn't have before. You want him to pay all the bills. You want him to buy the home. You want him to buy the car, the clothes, the shoes, the birkin bags, this, that, and the third. You want to be taken care of the same way feminine women, the so-called pick me that you can't stand, who lived her life to get that stuff. You want to come in after you've been a hardcore dude and then you want those men to pick you. You're a pass me, not a pick me. Because And the reason you're a pass me chick is because you deny and decline your whole biology. And now you want to get into a situation where your biology as a woman is acknowledged. So men, the difference between you and men, though, is that men go through all of this work not to be taken care of, but to do the taking care. You do all of this work to get taken care of in the end, something you could have did 20 years ago. You could have got a man to take care of you at 19, at 20, 21, 22, when you were running around here, running the street, trying to be a little dude. You could have got a man to do that. Baby girl, her boo-boo kitty, her poop. You could have got a dude to do that early. He'd have been much more willing to do that with you, the 20-year-old the you with no kids and no bitterness. He would have he would have gladly jumped on that, took care of you. And later on, you know what I'm saying? You want to go to school? Here, go have fun. That's for you. But see, the problem is, is that you get to this point in your life. And this is why you're not willing to so-called build a man or you're not willing to do the same thing with the take it care because it goes against your very biology to actually take care of men and family the way men take care of women and family. You don't know how to do that. It go against your very grain to then support the lifestyle of a man on your dime and don't complain about it.
Don't say nothing about it just like you don't want him saying nothing about it. You want him to support your lifestyle and the lifestyle of your children and don't say a mumbling word. You understand that? But the problem is you the one that submitted under the lost value system. You're the one that ignored your biology. So welcome to the life of men. Welcome to the life of being the new man. Y'all not looking for husbands. Y'all are looking for wives because you men. You want all the control, all the things that you said was wrong with, with men in relationships, the controlling and the dominance. And all that. You want that stuff. So be the man. Stop complaining. Anyway, sound off in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I am your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.